Hey everybody, Bill here, Tactical Yakin. Seems like I'm back from the dead. We're finally getting ready to open the shop back up. And I had a few guys email me who bought 10 SS's. And big questions were seating and stabilizers on the boats, among other things. So I want to do a quick video uh, to give you guys some insight and some ideas if you're going to DIY or if you want to get something from us. Um, this is, uh, we're getting ready to take the boat apart. Uh, this week we're going to strip the boat completely apart and retrofit all the stuff or as, mo as best we can to another kayak. Um, she's just worn out and frankly this boat's a little small and that front cockpit area up there is just a little tight for me. Um, so we're going to strip the boat, drop her up in little pieces, throw her away, and then retrofit everything. And we'll be doing a video on that. That's going to be a plain Jane sit on top kayak. Uh, and we're going to go from beginning to end to show you guys uh, how to do some of this stuff if you want to DIY it. And basically just everything we do, you can do to your kayak no matter what type it is. But uh, first things first, the uh, stabilizers. Okay, these are our Gen 5 stabilizers right here. Right now we're having a supply chain issue with these. Okay, I can get them. Seems to take about three weeks to get the blank in my hand. Okay, and uh, they're going up in price. So inflation is already here. If you guys haven't noticed it, it's already starting to hit us. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to work out not only the pricing on these, I'm trying to get a local vendor on these, and I'm trying to get it uh, so I don't, I can lower my shipping costs. Uh, right now, I pay about $40 in shipping costs to get these sent to me, and then if I send them to you, you're looking at another 40 bucks. okay? Um, we send you the kit, you get everything you need. You get, you get these, you get the inserts, you get all this, you get everything you need. To bolt these onto a kayak, uh, but I want to walk you through a couple things uh, real quick that you need to know. Uh, and then we're going to leave this whole subject alone. Uh, first thing you need to do is figure out where your rear spar is going to be. So if you're going to put a motor in place, um, your rear spar needs to be ahead of that motor. Okay. So figure out where your rear spar is going to be. Okay. Next thing you do, you're going to have to your rod holders need to be turned straight back okay they need to be parallel so this bar is straight across okay um, on most kayaks you want to put a plate in I don't know if you guys can see this but I put a plate in here because this area will flex on most kayaks usually this is a really thin skin area on a kayak um, if you can get under there and bolt those plates on all the better, but you can use uh, several large uh, sheet metal screws and screw them on, and it'll do the same job. So when you get done, you'll you'll put those on. You'll get your rod holders. If your kayak comes with rod holders, first check to see if they'll accept one and a quarter inch tubing. If they don't, you want to go out and buy a set of uh, Marine Raider rod holders. They're perfect fit. Okay, I'm going to set those in there, drill your holes, set it in there, set it straight back, and then we'll run your tubing. Now, if, we, if you buy this from us, we're going to pre-core these. This is one long tube that goes all the way through, okay? But we're going to show you how to core these if you want to DIY it yourself, okay? So, first thing you're going to do... Just come back here, figure out where your rear tube is going to be. Then you're going to mount this piece right here, this T right here in your rod holder. And just get yourself a short piece of one and a quarter tubing and run it from like here all the way through the other side. Just so you got something to work with. Okay. Then you're going to measure from the center of this tubing to the center of this tubing okay now write that measurement down you're going to need that then you're going to 
measure from the center of this tubing to the stern of your boat. And write that measurement down. Okay? Then you're going to come to your tubes, whatever you end up using. Um, four inch PVC drain pipe will do the same thing. It's not as good as these, um, but it will do the same job. Uh, it lacks a little bit of flotation, but we started out using those and they work fine. So if you guys want to DIY, you can use four inch drain tubing. Okay. Then this measurement, from the stern of the boat to the center of the tube, you want to go from the back of the tube to there. That's going to be your measurement to the center. And you want to drill a one inch hole. Okay. And then from here, you want to measure down to whatever that measurement was between those two rods, center to center. Drill a hole, okay? Um, if you're using one of these Gen 5s, we use a, we use the molding seam to find the center on this, but you can stand these, uh, if you're using a four inch PVC, you can stand that up against a door frame and uh, pop a line right down the middle of it and that'll, that'll keep your holes lined up, okay? Then, we have an insert that goes in here of one inch Schedule 40. We're gonna show you guys how to do that real quick. Okay? So you put your insert in there, and then we just have, all you have to do is assemble everything. Um, you're gonna notice everything is screwed together. You're only gonna glue four joints. You're gonna glue, <coughs> your inside structure to an adapter right here, inside structure to an adapter right here, and the same thing on that side over there. Everything else you want to screw, there's no reason to glue this, okay? And to go ahead and determine how many rod holders you want on whatever kind of kayak you've got, okay? In the case of this one, this 10SS, it's so tight in the back end uh, I couldn't put the rod holders in this area because I couldn't get to my cooler. So we put the rod holders outboard, which actually worked out great. So a little bit more comfortable getting to them out there. Okay. And all of this is one and a quarter inch. Um, you can use one and a quarter inch PVC. You can use one and a quarter inch PVC conduit, which I suggest you use uh, because it's UV resistant and it takes paint a lot better. Or you can use uh, one and a quarter inch PVC furniture grade, uh, which is expensive, but it looks great and it's color fast, so you don't have to worry about chipping it or any of that business right there. If you're going to use the furniture grade, I suggest you use a chop saw to do all your cuts. If you're if you're going to cut anything, use a chop saw. A uh, regular PVC cutter just won't do it. And, you want good, clean, straight cuts. It's just tough to do that with a handsaw. So, if you guys got a wood shop, if you got a wood shop or you have any woodworking experience, it's going to be easy peasy for you guys. Okay. All right. I'm going to go over and get a tube and show you guys what goes inside, and we'll go from there. Okay. So, we're going to give you all this stuff in a kit, but you can make it yourself. <clears throat> this is all Schedule 40 one inch schedule 40 okay you want to cut yourself a piece like this because you're going to use that to go through this so first thing you want to do is get a one and an eighth inch or a one and a quarter inch uh, hole, hole saw and you want to go ahead and cut your holes okay these have already been done uh, these have actually already been fitted to a kayak we're doing some repair work on this boat so I actually have these in the shop to work with right now. Um, then you're going to take this assembly, okay? This is not glued together. You're going to get yourself a torch or something to heat this up with, and you're going to heat this area up, okay? Make sure you don't melt it. So stay away from it. You just want this to be pliable, okay? And then you're going to reach in. You're going to take this. I'm doing this one-handed. You're going to reach in and you're going to force it up through that hole while it's warm and pliable. Okay, because your one and eight or one and a quarter inch hole is going to be a little small. Okay, 
you're going to do the same thing on both of these. Um, on the one in front, it just depends on how long your arm is as to how long this piece is. Okay, so you may want to get a couple uh, foot long piece so you can reach in there. Okay, get it up there, push it up in there. It takes a little bit of effort, but ultimately you want this to be sticking out of there. So if you reversed, if you reverse things, if you're on the inside of it, it would look like that. Okay. So you're gonna do that. Um, do the holes one at a time. Get this in there and let it cool down. Okay. Uh, it may mushroom this area a little bit. Probably won't. Uh, if it does mushroom it, you can just take a flat file and file the top off, and you're in good shape. Okay. When you're done. Hang on just a minute, I'm doing this one hand. You're gonna take your angles and you're gonna have a piece of tubing like this. You're gonna put a right angle on one end, a right angle on the other hand. You're gonna cut a piece to go on top of this. That's about two or three, eh, about two inches long, okay? You need to have a piece that inserts all the way in there and sticks out of this here far enough so that you can put a coupler on top of it okay so you'll have a this here one at the other end okay both parallel then you're gonna reach in and put that whole assembly inside and push this out okay then you're gonna drill a small hole here this, his was assembled a little bit differently, but what you're going to do is draw, draw a small hole here and you're going to run a, a uh, long uh, sheet metal screw through there and you're going to pull this up, okay? Um, that, what that does is secures this to the inside of here. Just prior to doing all that, you want to coat this surface on top with a bead of silicone. Okay. Uh, any high grade silicone, I use DAP, and you want to do the same thing on the back. And trust me, your hands are going to get messy doing this because the silicone just goes everywhere. But what that does, that gives you a seal on the inside. Okay. All right. Once that's up in there and screwed and has pulled this up into this hole, you want to get a one inch to one quarter inch adapter and glue that on top okay and that's the, that's it on that one can't really see them on my boat but on there okay that's going to sandwich this between the top of this and the bottom of that coupler okay and that's the only glue joints you're going to have on this entire assembly okay once that's done, you can go ahead and put a coupler on top of it, one and a quarter inch coupler, and then cut a piece of one and a quarter inch PVC to go between that coupler and this elbow. And then this elbow goes to your cross tube, same thing on the other side. Okay, same thing here. Okay, this one doesn't have a coupler on it. The reason for that is, um, this tube sits lower than this tube. That makes sense? Move this out of the way. Okay. So that was the easy way for me to drop this so it was level. Okay. Um, you're going to start out like that. Okay. Depending on the kayak you have, this may be. A little longer a little longer a little shorter okay and we'll get to that later on so you'll have this assembly mounted in here this cross tube going through here and these on here okay everything attached there then you can tie down your back these are plastic electrical conduit hangers um, one and a quarter inch, you can get them at Home Depot, Lowe's, any place like that. They've got about 200 pounds of shear strength, so they're plenty. You can pick the kayak up by these. 
so they're plenty heavy duty for what you need. You don't need to mess with metal, which is going to rust on you. Okay, and you can paint these black, and they hold paint pretty well. Okay, so once you get everything situated, and we're going to cut these for you so that initially your tubes are going to be 48 inches from outside to outside. Okay, so this this tube and this tube are going to be the same length. Okay, if you want your your tubes in closer in board, like right up next to the kayak, you can cut those. But this tube and that tube are always going to be the same length. Okay, and frankly, I've I've done this with the tubes uh, in board right against the kayak. It worked just fine. It's just the farther out you get them, the more stable the kayak is. And uh, I like to go push it to the limits. 48 inches seems like the sweet spot. Plus, you can fit the kayak between the wheel wells and the pickup truck. Okay? But if you don't want it that wide, feel free to push them inboard a little bit. It's going to take a little bit of stability away, but really not much. Okay? So, when, you're, when you get everything assembled the way you want it, when you go to the water, everything's screwed together now, okay? When you go to the water, with you sitting in the kayak, ideally, your water line should be at about the halfway mark across the length of this tube, okay? If the nose of the tube is sitting up high, you want to go ahead and put a, a longer piece in here and adjust that down. Okay. If you're in a situation like this, where you don't have any, uh, you can't make this any shorter, then this is always, this rear one's always going to be your pivot point. So wherever it's at, that's, that's where you're at. Now, if this is sitting out of the water, if your nose low, and your tail high, sitting in the water, you want to add a piece in here and drop it down. Okay, and then retake it, and then retest it. Okay, and then if you have to shorten this piece, you can, or if you have to add, add a piece in, you can do that. But you need to do that on the water. Honestly, it helps if you have someone else with you, um, and if they could take a picture of the kayak and give it to you so you can look at it, then you can go from there. Okay, uh, what we do, we'll do the water test. I'll take several pieces of different lengths of a uh, one and a quarter PVC with me down to the water and uh, I can do the adjustments on the water there with an electric drill okay so that is really all it is to it on these guys uh, if you use a piece of four inch PVC instead of one of these gen fives it's gonna be a hell of a lot less expensive for you guys to begin with um, but all you need for them is going to be a 4 inch PVC cap, which is the same cap we use on these. Walk over here. Except in the 4 inch tube, that cap's going to fit externally. And on ours, they fit internally. Okay? You, want them, you always want to put a plug in these too. Because uh, water finds a way. No matter how well you seal these things, water finds a way. Oh yeah, one other thing. Talk about sealing. When you put the coupler in up here, when you glue these together, you want to beat a seal silicone in there too. Okay. And then on the nose of it, you can either put uh, the the um, PVC cap on the nose, which is going to be flat, or what you can do. If you want to make it a little more streamlined, uh, you can take a two liter uh, soft drink bottle, plastic soft drink bottle, and cut about six inches or eight inches off the bottle, the front end of it, and it'll slide perfectly over that four inch um, PVC. And you can silicone it on, put a good bead of silicone around it, slide it on, and then blow a little foam just on the inside of that comb just to give it a little bit of body, okay? Don't blow, blow a bunch of foam in there because it's, it won't set up. So you just want to, you just want to fill that cone uh, with a little bit of, of uh, foam, 
let it sit for 24 hours and then go ahead and cut off the residual that's going to blow out of the front end of that cone and you can either put the cap back on the cone and just use it that way or you can trim that off flat and then uh, put a little dab of silicone on that area and then you're good to go and you can paint it okay downside on using the PVC 4 inch PVC uh, it's a little heavy it's not quite as much flotation and it doesn't take paint well so you're going to be constantly touching up the paint on them okay but that's the ins and outs guys of putting these assemblies together um, if you order these from us the entire kit you get everything you need uh, hardware I mean everything screws PVC internal whole nine yards you get everything um, the kit right now it's probably going to be about 200 bucks, uh, 200, 220 bucks after shipping. Okay, don't hold me to that because prices are going up uh, right now. They're going through the ceiling right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, if you want the the uh, furniture grade PVC fittings for this, which are really really nice, uh, you need to add about 70 bucks to that. So at about 250 bucks, they're in line with other uh, stabilizers that are on the market. Uh, the upside on these is they're bigger, they're more streamlined. And the problem with the smaller stabilizers is short things don't travel through water well. So they're really draggy. And when you, on, the, on these other stabilizers they, you buy, the stabilizers aren't in the water at all times. They kind of sit just above the water. So as you're paddling, they're tipping back and forth, and they're trying to turn you as they grab the water. They're trying to turn you. They're really not streamlined, okay? Um, they're pretty good for just standing, but for traveling, they're not. So you want to think about that. Um, these are basically shaped like a torpedo. They're a real low drag design. Um, you're really not going to notice these in the water when you're paddling, but it will turn this this 10 SS or really any other kayak into a a uh, stand-up kayak. We can stand up and fish. They make these that stable. And I'm a big guy. I'm about six foot. I'm over 200 pounds, which is unheard of getting in one of these 10 SSs. And it's just fine for me, except that my legs are just too long to that front end up there. So I'm just getting another kayak. But uh, go ahead and think about that, guys. If you if you want these, I should have my supply issues na nailed down the next month or so. And uh, but if you want to use four-inch PVC for your stabilizers, that's a good, inexpensive way to go. I'd love to have your business, but you know I'm here to help you guys out. So that, as they say, is that. Okay, one other quick thing, seating, you guys saw my previous uh, video where we had the office seat in there and we ran a piece of schedule 40, one inch schedule 40 through the hole, through here, all the way through the other side and then we had a small office seat pad on top of that on a PVC frame. That is honestly the best, uh, simplest seating option. For this boat if you're going to put a raised seat in it okay uh, i've got a vibe seat in it now this thing is really comfortable for the money i'm telling you for the money this is the best seat on the market but it takes a lot of modifying to get this seat into a uh 10ss so it's not for the uh faint of heart to, uh, project to do okay it takes some cutting to get it in there so i wouldn't suggest this if you're a novice um, and one thing I definitely don't suggest you guys do, and I've seen people doing them, is getting a seat and they put it up on top of this. Let's get this junk out of the way. They put it up on top of this. Okay? Don't do that. That is going to deform on you. When you're out in the hot sun, that area gets hot. You put a seat on top of that with your weight, it is going to deform on you. So don't do that. So that little office seat trick previous video is the way to go on these 10 SS's and it gets you up about five or six inches off the uh, off the bottom of the boat. All right. All right guys that's it. We're gonna move on and do a little 
little oh one other thing I didn't show you guys I did change my solar panel arrangement this is typically what we do on our customers we have an igloo cooler the solar panel is the same size as the igloo cooler you can buy these at Academy I think they're about 40 bucks okay um, this is just going to help top off your battery in the course of the day so you have a longer day on the water we use a 34 amp hour battery um, typically I, I get all day out of that because I'm not running all over the place but uh, the other day we went out for uh, five hours or so and it was a really windy day and I was on the motor all day long and I came home and I still had battery which is unheard of so it's just going to keep topping your battery off can't run the electric motor on it but it's going to help top it off okay alright guys that's it oh yeah one other thing on these deals if you're going to do this yourself okay and you're going to core these out so that this tube slides all the way through you need to use this just a wire brush um, buy yourself one extra uh, fitting so you can practice on it okay it does take a, a certain style I guess the best word I can use to learn how to do this but you need this and you need a good drill don't use a battery drill you need a good corded drill okay and uh, all you're gonna do is pass this through back and forth back and forth back and forth until this tube will slide freely through this tube okay and you want to do it uh, you want to keep it moving unless it one spot because it'll begin to melt this so you want to pass it through pass it through pass it through pass it through pull it out clean it off in concrete or something like that real quick because you're going to have plastic melting on this okay then pass your tube through there until it passes all the way through and just keep shaving off until you get a good clean pass through that's all you got to do uh, it takes about 10 minutes per joint to do those um, you're going to have PVC shavings everywhere, so when you're done, plan on pulling out the shop vac or a, uh, a broom and clean it up and clean it up yourself too, because you're going to have it all over you. But that's about it, guys. All right, y'all have a great one. Next week, we're going to start our other kayak. I'm not going to bother filming taking this one apart, but we're going to we're going to do a video on putting that one together. All right, y'all have a good one. Bye.